If you're watching this video, chances are that you are in the market to buy a moped. And well, hopefully today I can help show you some of the pitfalls and traps to be aware of, and if you're gonna buy a non-running project, things to look out for. What's up everybody and welcome to today's episode. My name is Nick Lanza and you're watching Car Rant. I am an avid moped scooter enthusiast. For the sake of this video, I do want to put it out there. I'm going to use both interchangeably. However, there are specific terms and definitions that might change based on the legality of things in your state. Also, there are some technical differences between mopeds and scooters, but that's not the purpose of today's video. Today is just your introductory and your buyer's guide for, say, if you wanted to get into a scooter project of your own. Obviously, if you're watching this video, you've been exposed to the idea of a scooter and or moped, and you've probably seen a few of them in real life because, well, no one gets into this without having seen it or experienced it for themselves. And as with anything to do with automotive sides of things, there are plenty of options available online to purchase that are brand new, but this video is for those people who are looking for a scooter that's older. Obviously, if you buy a new scooter, you're not gonna need help figuring out if the electrical works if the engine's got good compression and stuff like that. But before we get anywhere near that, you have to ask yourself, what is the purpose of this scooter? Am I using this as a mode of transportation, as a weekender kind of thing, or do I wanna have a fun project that I can build out and do all kinds of crazy stuff with? I'm a huge Honda Metropolitan fan. I've now got three of them, one of them being a Metruck, which is a hybrid between two different scooters. These are my favorite types of scooters. So today I'm gonna to take you along with me as we go through the process of determining whether or not this type of stuff is right for you. So you've made your decision. You now know what moped you wanna buy. And now you're at that critical step of what do I need to look out for when I go to see this thing in person? Honestly, there's a lot of things to look out for with anything, but we can narrow it down to a few very specific details. As with anything used, there will always be little things that you're gonna just have to be willing to compromise on but as far as functionality goes, the key main things you're gonna to wanna to look out for is if there's a service history, see how much has been done or how well the maintenance has been. You wanna check on all the fluids, you wanna see what kind of electrical is going on, and if it's a completely not running example like the one we're gonna show you today, then seeing and ascertaining everything else about the bike before you really dive in deep. Ladies and gentlemen, proudly introducing my new Honda Metropolitan. This example actually came from the generation that's from 2002 to 2009. And these underneath all the nice pretty fairings are more or less a Honda Ruckus. So a lot of parts can be switched in between the two with some to little work. It's really not that bad as is. This is actually my third and my second of red metros now i bought this thing sight unseen i wanted to get another project and for me it didn't matter if it ran or not already had running scooters for you at home who may not have that luxury this is an entirely different scenario for you that said what are some things that you need to be looking at when you go to actually see the vehicle in question rule number one always bring a big friend or at least someone who can help you negotiate, someone who's got maybe even a little more confidence than you, but also has enough sound logical reason to say, hey, this might not be a good idea. Yes, yeah. no repeat of the clip story. But what should you do when you first interact with a scooter of any variety, whether it's a Metro, Ruckus, or anything else? Obviously, the first thing you're going to want to look at is the exterior. How does the outside of the bike look? Is the unit in question in desperate need of repair, or is it in relatively good shape? Does it need to be repainted? or just a simple nice polish and shine good enough to help revive the vehicle in question. Some key things to keep in mind is stuff like the seat. Is it torn? Is it scuffed? Or is the entire material coming off? Other things could be the tires. Do they look dry rot? Are they done for? Do you need to just freshen them up? Truth be told, a simple once over of just how it looks in general should obviously be very easily assessed by pictures, but that's not always possible because sometimes the pictures that the seller gives you are just archaic and old and don't really give you any sort of direction as to what the condition of the bike is now. In our case, this Metro on the outside is in really, really nice shape. The fairings are put together, nothing's cracked, nothing's coming apart. The seat is a little worn, 
but honestly I plan to replace my seat anyway with one from Cheeky Seats because they have really, really nice leather ones. Now, in our particular case, we've actually already off camera started kind of diagnosing what's wrong with this particular unit. But all in all, it has good compression. We tested that by trying to kickstart the engine and also by starting it normally with the key in the ignition and using the actual start button. In our case, what ails this bike is literally just a little bit of maintenance, freshen up stuff like the tires and brakes and the electrical system. Whoever was in this thing definitely does not belong working on anything electrical because there were a lot of things that were jumped out, looped out, or were just plain dangerous for anyone involved. Otherwise, the lights are working, the brakes themselves are holding. The fact is, is Ian got this off the truck by literally just kind of wheeling it backwards, holding the rear brake down and putting it on the ground that way. Though sadly, one thing I will have to report on that is a negative in this particular bike's case is someone has bent the daylights out of these handlebars. Whether they be for a taller rider or they just bent it by say maybe letting it fall over. These brake levers are not in good shape. The handlebars are bent a tiny bit, but thankfully for me, the handlebars being bent is not an absolute detraction. I can work with this and I have worked with this twice now. And this all needs to play into your decision to buy a scooter. What are you comfortable with having to fix and replace? Because the reality is scooters and mopeds are basically deified bicycles. And while they don't have the ability to say be pedaled along, you kind of have to think about them in that same regard because you know, just like a bike, you got to service the chain. In this case, it's a belt. You got to make sure that your wear items are taken care of. If you have the budget with an old scooter like this, this guy is now 17 years old. If you have the ability to just maintenance it a little bit, take good care of it, straighten it back out, put some fresh new hardware in it, go for it. If you don't have that opportunity to do that, this might not be the right particular vehicle for you. But all said and done, scooters are easy to fix. They're very simple. You only need a small set of hand tools for these. They're not complicated in the sense of they have crazy wiring diagrams and things of that nature. They're very, very simple machines, many of which don't even run with an ECU. But with all that said, if this was helpful for you, please let me know down in the comment section how your buying experience went. And if you have any other questions, same thing, let us know. We'd love to help you. There's plenty of us here on the channel that are very familiar with this stuff now, having done this for the last three years. And uh, yeah, if you want to see what happened to our last Metropolitan, check out this video right over here. Because we took the red net we had last time and made a monster out of it. And now, Ian's the primary driver of it.